Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Among all of you, any of you, do you think you are so stupid in life or when you thought that you are one of the smartest person in the universe? <laughs> Did you ever thought yourself to change your present identity and try to make a new version of yourself from present identity? Don't worry, you are not the unique one. You are also part of all of us. We all are part of the same kind of the journey. In a few years back, I was also like you. Let me tell you at the outset itself, something happened 25 years ago with me. Initially, I thought I'll not share with anybody. But now today, I think it's time to share it. Let me take you back 25 years ago. 25 years ago, I was working as a medical officer in an emergency in this hospital, here itself. I was very happy, very confident, maybe slightly overconfident. I was very happy. My memories are so good for that time. I was in the peak of my confidence. Then suddenly something happened, something frightening happened one night. Something very frightening happened one night. I was on duty in the night, and one patient was brought who was having a snake bite. By that time, I was just a young graduate from the medical college. I knew theoretically how to manage a snake bite. I had read everything. But I had never ever managed a snake bite myself. I was confident, I was scared also. But I was more scared than the confident. Then probably the patient attendant, he sensed my fear. He came near to me. He patted my back. And he told me, Doctor, you seem to be a little worried. Don't worry. This is the usual case in our village. Patient is going to survive. Don't worry. Just relax. Take a glass of water. I just sat down. One of my nursing colleagues, who still works with me today, he managed the patient very well. I just sat down quietly. Next morning, the patient became all right. He happily discharged home. I was happy to discharge home. But when I came back and returned to the hostel, my room, I was little disheartened. I was a little disillusioned. I was worried. I thought I was a failure. I thought I was a failure. I didn't know anything. I was a young, dynamic doctor, smart. I was thinking I'm on the top of the world. But suddenly I was a failure. And I was a failure, and I knew that my other colleagues also knew that I was a failure. And most of all, I knew myself I was a failure. I thought my life would be very straightforward, right from the beginning. But suddenly I was in the bumpy road, a curvy linear road. I was worried. Very, very much worried. I thought, what am I going to do it? I came back to my room. I was perplexed. Now, that day I learned a little more lesson. I learned about certain beliefs, that beliefs that makes up. And I thought there's a need to bend, unfold, and mend those beliefs. That's why I want to share it today. Now, next thing I would like to share it about is about how do we go into the curvy linear path of our life. For most of us, our life is not a very straightforward life. It doesn't move in the straight line. It moves in a lot of curves and bends. Curves and bends, they are part of our life. We grow in the womb, in the curve, our heartbeat, our respiration, our pulse, our energies, all are curves and bends. Today, I'd like to discuss with you, I'd like to talk to you something about these curves in the life. And I'd like to discuss this on the issue of the DK curve, which most likely resonates with our own life. Okay? Now, let me tell you about this thing. Most of the time, when we are initially very confident, we rise very highly on the top of the mountain. That's part of the Mount Stupid. The, the, the views are very nice, very beautiful from the Mount Stupid. We move around the, on that, we are very confident. We are very happy and look around at the nice, beautiful views. We think that we are confident. We try to jump on top of that Mount Stupid and try to go to the next Mount Stupid. But suddenly we fall rapidly down. Suddenly we fall rapidly down and there comes the valley of despair. We are failed. We are so worried about the failure. We thought we are very confident. We go around and then we suddenly fail. Now, what the period of time I have realized that the overconfidence in the doctors and not admitting the mistakes comes immediately after your MBBS, your graduation from the school. At that time, we are quite filled with the facts and theories. We remember everything. We know everything about theory. And we are the best theorizers. The next thing comes after a specialization. Once after the specialization, we have a lot of things in our mind. We have a lot of algorithms and the strategies. Then also we become overconfident. Now, the, when we fail down in this valley of despair, we are quite worried. 
Now, right from the beginning, I understand that the concept of the success and failure in our country or in our society is quite difficult of us. We every time we think if somebody successes, other fails. But success and failure are not difficult of us. Now, I think we must mend this belief. We must change this belief that opposite of success is not failure. Probably opposite of success is you are trying to be slightly slow only, but you are not failing. That concept and that belief needs to be very, very well in our society. Now, over the period of time, I have also understood that there is another problem with the failure. Right in the beginning, if you try to fail in the society, people will think that you are useless, you have already failed in it. But I think we should change the paradigms. It's better to fail early, fail fast and move ahead, rather than fail later and stay in the valley of despair. <coughs> failing early and failing fast is better in your life, rather than failing late and failing on the face of your ground. You must understand that sometimes it's better to fail on the smaller mountains, rather than to fail in the larger mountains later on. Failing early is almost always better than failing last and the failing in your found face. Now, interestingly, once we fail in the valley of despair, we again try to move along with the curvy linear path towards the next slope of enlightenment. But again, one must understand, this, it is not always that one slope led leads to the another slope. You know, that slope could be the bridge to the next valley of the mountain and then next valley of the despair. Now, I'll tell you my own story. When I went to the Ames, all in the Institute of Medical Sciences, I did my post-graduation and specialization under one of the best teachers of that time, and I had done one of the best research. I was still at the Mount Stupid. I was very happy. I thought I was very confident. Then when I came back here, I was trying to make myself as a good professor. Then I wrote my own first independent research proposal and gave it to my mentor. But it was mercilessly rejected by my mentor. Again, I came back from the valley of you know, Mount Stupid to the despair. I thought I was quite confident. What happened? I was again on the top of the world. I thought I was quite successful after doing my specialization, but no, it is not like that. You again have to rise slowly over the valley of the mountain to the valley of the despair. Now, next thing, another important thing which I think is in our life, when we are going in the curvy linear path, sometimes, somewhere, we are always filled with the self-doubt. Am I confident? Am I confident? How to move around that? Most of the time, most of the time, you try to move along that, but somewhere in your valley of the path, you need to have some mentor, somewhere you need to take advice from somebody. But again, our ego, our problem, our society and our belief systems makes us think that why should I ask from somebody? But it's not like that. If you want to cross the path, cross the chasm, you must ask for the mentor. Now, another important thing is who is a mentor? Most of the time, we try to think as a guru as a mentor. But my dear friends, don't confuse gurus as a mentor. Gurus and the mentors are different. You know, gurus will like to take you the disciples. Mentor will try to take, they will try to tell you, don't follow me, go to your own path. Gurus, they will try to tell you, follow me, behind me, be behind me. The mentors will tell, no, 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 you move ahead. I'll be behind you with the torch. Gurus will try to think, that you are similar to them, but the mentors, they will try to be happy when you are away from them. Gurus are different again, you see. Gurus will be very, very happy. They will try to give you the rules, do this, do that, black, white, this is right, this is wrong. Mentors will never give you the rules. They will try to tell you, move around the gray zone, I will help you. Sometimes in life, you might also have some role models, big role models. Again, role models are not mentors. Role models look very nice, bright, shining stuff from far. But when you go near to them, they are too hot to touch. Role models are mesmerizing, but they might not be the mentor. Now, what to do? If you are in the late 20s and 30s, try to find out the mentor who was in the 40s and 50s, half a generation old. Then probably you'll find a friend, philosopher, and a guide. And that is a mentor. So you need to bend that belief also. Now, next, coming to the next issue. This is a very, very difficult and contentious issue, very shaky part. I'm trying to talk about the relationship between doctors and the society as such. Currently, you know, the medicine has already been, almost always been considered the noble profession in life. But we must tell to the society, it is not only the medicine that's a noble profession. 
Every profession is a noble. Every profession is as noble as medicine, provided you practice it nobly. It is not that the doctors are the only best people in the world, no. Doctors are as usual, as usual than any of us, any of the common people. I'll tell you, let me be real with you. I have been a doctor myself, I have been a patient myself, I have been a patient attendant myself. You must understand, like any other people, even if I, I don't follow my own doctor's advice very strictly, I am also trying to be as healthy as anybody else. And when you become sick, or when our family members become sick, when you travel along the hospital pathway, that hospital is quite scary for me also, like anybody else. Just being a doctor doesn't help me a lot of things. And again, tell, telling you frankly, being a doctor is again quite risky. I know a lot of things where things can go wrong. I'm quite scared of that. That makes me quite panicky. Now lately, you know, you must understand the doctor themselves and the media themselves is trying to project doctor as heroes. Either heroes or martyrs. Doctors are neither heroes nor martyrs. They are the simple people. They are, they are doing the job, their job equally. Now this dialect, this belief of the society has to be amended. That there's a lot of issue about the doctor's duty to other society, but nobody discusses what is the society's duty to other doctors. You must change the paradigm, you must change the belief that society also has a reciprocal duty to other doctors. It is not only the doctors have only duty to other society. Maybe our own narrative of the heroism has changed that. So we must tell the society that we are neither heroes nor martyrs, neither saints nor scientists nor sinners. We are a common people like us. Let's change the belief. Let's mend the belief. That is the issue today. Now let me tell you something. In this Kavi learning journey about moving ahead, moving ahead, one must understand that doctors have been always portrayed as either or good or bad, expert or non-expert. It's not like that. We must practice something called paradoxical, either or or. Doctors may be compassionately humble. They should be a confidently humble people. See? You must be daringly responsible. Daringly responsible means try to accept the challenges, but don't be reckless. Daringly responsible means try to accept, challenge the conventional wisdom, but don't be reckless. Be polite. Sit in the back of your conference room, listen to what has been being told to you, quietly. Then guys, come on the stage, grab the mic, face the crowd, ask them the questions. Ask the society to change their belief about you. It is not that, doctor, I am sorry. It's not like that. It's not like movies. But in real life, doctors are also having a difficult life. But only thing is that we are doing our job to the best of the things. Now, to coming to the end, let's think again. We need to learn, unlearn, and relearn. That is, again, mending, bending, and unfolding the beliefs. Learning never stops. Let's, let's be very passionately curious. Let's be confidently humble. Let's move away with challenging the conventional wisdom. And to end, I'd like to quote from the wise man, if you'd like to treat the Trump and disaster as the same, everything in the world is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much.